Now, what is going on, guys? Today, we're going to take a look at resource indicators for OAuth. So let's look at the typical OAuth scenario and let's see what uh, we're talking about and why this is useful. So if you have a client, you somehow get some access token from the authorization server, you request certain scopes, and then what you do is you use this uh, token at a resource server. Now, the issue is if the scopes are not properly defined or if they are loosely defined or if they overlap and the authorization server is managing a lot of resource server, it could be that the token that you get and that is actually only intended for resource server one, for example, might also be available at resource server two. And that would be a big issue. So just imagine you are, I don't know, building a third party app um, with, with Google, right? And the access token that you get for Google Calendar now also works for, uh, I don't know, the Google Drive API. Yeah. So this could theoretically happen if there's like some scope overlap, uh, then both resource server could say, yeah, it kind of looks logic. So it's, it's sort of fine. Another issue is, uh, let's imagine these resource server, like they don't know each other and one of them is compromised. So they might just steal like the token and they might just spam other resource servers in order to get like information with these access tokens. So it's sort of like an issue. And uh, what they're proposing in this resource indicator uh, RFC is that you have to specify the URI of the, or the URIs of the resources, of the resource servers that you want to access. So it's actually very simple. So when you make the request to the authorization server, you include an additional parameter, which is called resource, which is an URI, which is the URI of the resource server that you intend to access. So for example, if you want to access resource server onexamplecom you would include this in here. So HTTPS resource server onexamplecom Now, bear in mind that you can, with form encoding, you can include uh, parameters with the same key. So technically speaking, you could request access for resource server two as well, um, but it's just not recommended. So on a technical level, it supports it, but like the spec says, okay, you should really see that you only have like one uh, like URI where you get access to. And then if the client, for example, makes a request to the resource server two, then the server knows, oh, hold on a second, like this, uh, token like is sort of like not scoped for me so i'm just going to reject it so even though the signature is valid uh, i just have the wrong audience so you get like a token back and the idea is that it contains like an audience claim and this audience claim is then exactly what you put in like the, what you put in the resource and then basically this resource server can check ah oh, yeah okay it's the right or the wrong audience, and then it doesn't work. And this also means that a call from resource server one, for example, to resource server two would also not work if resource server two is implemented properly, of course. But this sort of forces you to specify upfront which, um, yeah, which protected resource you want to access, which kind of makes it harder for data to get lost and which makes it harder for, for your data to get stolen. So it's like a pretty simple thing. Actually, you just include the resource uh, parameter here and then you get it as part of the odd claim. So audience, which means the intended recipient of uh, like this, this token. And then you can just use it over there. Yeah, so pretty simple thing. Uh, really nice, very short RFC, uh, well written. I would encourage you to read it. And uh, yeah, that's it pretty much. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please give a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.